Welcome to UNCDF monthly update on the post-2015 agenda. During the next 10 minutes, you will get three important pieces of information. First, an overview of the process will help you understand the complexity of the consultations that have taken place and that are ongoing to shape the future development agenda. Second, we will look at the issues, what issues are being discussed, particularly in the areas that are of interest for UNCDF. And third, most importantly, we will look at UNCDF's role in the post-2015 consultations and how we are contributing to the new agenda. So, let's start with the process. What is going on in the post-2015 development agenda? The whole process started in 2010 and it will end at the end of 2015, when the MDGs are expiring in the new development framework which will probably be constituted of the so-called Sustainable Development Goals, will enter into force. As shown in this graphic, the General Assembly meetings that take place every September are the main milestones in this process. From 2010 to 2015 there are three key phases one should consider. Let's look quickly at the very first phase, the one starting in September 2010. What happened then was that back to back with the General Assembly there was an MDG summit that basically mandated the UN Secretary General to come up with proposals for what will come after the MDGs. As you can see from the graphic, a lot of things happened after that, mainly, and I am referring to the red bubbles that you see above the line, what happened was that a number of consultations and processes started. A UN task team was established to support the development of new goals. The famous Rio Plus 20 conference took place. The high-level panel of eminent persons was established also to provide advice on what could come after 2015. And very importantly a lot of global, regional and national consultations mostly coordinated by UNDP started because this time around the idea is that the new goals will be the result of very broad and open consultations. Two important mechanisms were also instituted, the Open Working Group, an intergovernmental body that will define the new development goals, and the Committee of Experts that will define the financing framework to support the future development goals. In a nutshell, in the first phase, a global consultation has started, one of unprecedented complexity and scope, on what should be the goals to guide development efforts after 2015, Below the line, you can see a number of blue bubbles, those are there to show that UNCDF not only has followed this processes very carefully but it has actively contributed to them. Examples include the global online consultation on growth and employment that UNCDF co-hosted with UNDP and ILO. The workshop on inequality and inclusive growth that UNCDF hosted applying its multi-stakeholder approach to the difficult question of how to address inequality in the post-2015 framework. The very successful policy note, called Inclusive Future, which followed the workshop and a number of technical inputs that UNCDF has provided to technical bodies supporting the consultations, like the UN task team supporting the financing for development agenda. Now, let's look at a second phase. This is where we are now. This is a crucial phase. The focus is shifting from general consultations to the actual decision-making process that will aim at producing a new list of SDGs. There are many processes going on, but there are at least three that stand out and on which UNCDF is focusing on, the Open Working Group, the Intergovernmental Committee of Experts on Financing for Development, and the events that the President of the General Assembly is convening to discuss about the post-2015 framework. All this will lead us to the end of 2014 when the Secretary General will present a report containing concrete proposals for the post-2015 agenda. So, there is a lot happening in 2014. The graphic shows the kind of calendar that UNCDF is monitoring to make sure we don't miss any of the important meetings where issues that matter to UNCDF, and issues where UNCDF can contribute will be discussed at the highest level. For what concerns what will come after September 2014, well, nobody can really tell for now, 
But what we know is that there will be negotiations based on the proposals made by the UN Secretary General that will hopefully lead to a global agreement on the new development agenda. Now, let's turn to the substance of the discussions. Many issues are being discussed, and most of them are very complex. For instance, one of the discussions is about the universality of the new goals. The idea is that the new goals should be universal. But how do you define an agenda that is applicable to both very advanced and less developed countries? Similarly, there is a consensus that the new agenda should cover all key economic, social and environmental challenges, but how many goals can we include in the new agenda without making it too broad? There is a huge challenge ahead in terms of defining priorities. Another very difficult topic in the ongoing consultations has to do with issues like governance or human rights, how to define them in the form of goals and targets. How can we measure progress in these areas? Plus, on top of all discussions on the goals, a big question is who is going to pay for it? What financing framework? What financial resources should be committed to implement the new agenda? And for instance, what should be the role of ODA and have other sources of financing? It is evident that some of these issues are very relevant to UNCDF and that they raise enormous political and technical challenges. But let's look at UNCDF's role in all this. What issues do we engage on? Based on UNCDF's mandate and in the context of its new strategic framework, UNCDF advocates for a post-2015 framework that deliberately addresses inequality and fosters inclusive growth. For more information on how we approach the topics of inequality and inclusive growth you can have a look at Inclusive Future, a recent flagship UNCDF publication. At UNCDF we advocate for inclusive growth focusing particularly on three aspects. First, we bring to the discussion a focus on financial and territorial inclusion, two key dimensions that are linked very closely to UNCDF's work and expertise. Second, UNCDF promotes inclusive growth with a clear geographic focus on the LDCs, our main constituency. Third, UNCDF insists and places a focus on the need to use in an innovative way financing and technology as key vectors of inclusive growth. Based on these areas of focus and interest, we follow closely a number of ongoing consultations on financial inclusion, on territorial inclusion and the localization of the MDGs, on financing for development and on information technologies, on electronic payments. On all these topics we focus and we advocate for a fair recognition of the particular needs of the LDCs. So, what is next? UNCDF has defined an action plan for its engagement in post-2015 discussions during this year. We will undertake two sets of activities. The first set of activities has to do with us, UNCDF staff, particularly at headquarters, taking part in and supporting current intergovernmental processes. To do so, we will keep monitoring the discussions on the issues that are important for UNCDF and we will deliver UNCDF message and inputs to the post-2015 using well-targeted and technically sound policy notes and briefs. But, this is not just about us participating to intergovernmental processes managed by others, UNCDF promotes its own post-2015 initiatives. We will soon host a second stakeholder consultation on inclusive growth. We will produce policy notes covering our areas of expertise, and last but not least, we will have a number of activities that are aimed at internal knowledge sharing, so that all UNCDF colleagues can be up to date with the important post-2015 discussion and participate in it. This will take the form of monthly updates of brown bag lunches at HQ and webinars with the regions, and of the one-stop shop function that UNCDF policy unit will play in order to provide colleagues in UNCDF with any help they may need to engage on post-2015 matters. As briefly outlined by this infographic, the post-2015 is a complex process and UNCDF intends to play a role in it. Engaging in such a process is very important for at least two reasons. First, the post-2015 framework determines the environment within which UNCDF, like its partners and donors, 
will operate in the years 2015 to 2030. Second, UNCDF, as part of the UN system, has the responsibility and the opportunity of supporting member states by providing evidence-based inputs, analytical thinking and field experience. For these reasons we will continue to engage in the post-2015 agenda and to use it as an opportunity to contribute to the global discussion and to enhance our own understanding of the framework in which we operate and what role UNCDF can play. For now, this is it. Thank you for your attention and if you have any question or need any assistance please don't hesitate to contact UNCDF's policy unit.